Hi everybody, Claire here from Rainbow Acrylics. I'm going to try a colour scheme I have never tried before. Um, I avoid red often in paintings, which I think is crazy because red is gorgeous. Um, I think it's just that I've never really found the right red. So I found um, a crimson colour. So it's just a really beautiful, rich, rich, warm red. Um, and I found a beautiful um, crimson colour scheme for a, something online. Um, so that's what I'm going to base it on. So crimson, gold and some pinky colours and some blue. I'm going to do a Dutch pour. This is my second ever pour with um, real Floatrol, Floatrol, not Oatrol, Floatrol this time. Um, so I'm really excited to see what results I get. Let me show you the colours. So this to me feels like a very grown up colour scheme because there's no crazy colours in it. There's no turquoise, there's no bright pink. They're all quite grown up classy colours. So the colour that the crimson I mentioned is this. So Windsor and Newton and it's called Alizarin Crimson. Um, it's really, really pretty. So you can see it's just quite deep, really lovely colour. Going to try this one, I've not tried this before. This is Pearl Red. So I've realised, I've put some on the lid here actually, if I can try and show you. If you angle it, can you see, oh I'm out of focus, let's get in focus. If I angle it, it has this slight, no it's not really working, it has this slightly red tinge to it. You can sort of see it, pinky red there. So I've bought four of these pearl, um, Amsterdam pearl colours. So this is the red one. So I thought that would be a good combination, a good one to combine with the others. I've got um, Royal and Langnickel Thalo Cyanine Blue, Iridescent Gold by Pebio Studio Acrylics, De La Rowney System 3 Acrylic Purple, and then this colour, which is also new to me, I've not used this yet, Amsterdam um, Venetian Rose. So it's it's almost like a salmon pink, really, really pretty. Um, so as I said, I'm gonna mix all of these with the real, real Floatrol. So in each of these little pots, I have put 30 grams of Floatrol, 15 grams of paint, and between 11 and 12 grams of water. So it's a ratio of two to one to three quarters, Floatrol to paint to water. Um, so I'm excited, let's get started. So my canvas is a 60 by 40 centimetre. I've covered it in the base colour. I should have mentioned I'm just using Amsterdam white for the base. So I'm just bursting the air bubbles with the blowtorch. I've just noticed a patch of slightly bare canvas there. So I'll just smooth that back over. So the colour order that I have decided to go with, I'm going to start with the blue. So I've got a really nice dark colour to put it directly onto the white. I'm then going for the Venetian rose, then the white, then the purple, then the gold and then the red. So I said at the beginning I wanted the red to be the main feature. So I'm going to put the red on top. So it's going to be a red pour, red painting. Right, so the design... I quite like a design where it starts in one corner and it kind of floats up, but I don't want just to do one line. What I've decided to do is one line of pattern coming up here, but then another line somehow sweeping this way. Right, what I've just done is put the paint, I mix the paint in these little pots, uh, but I can't really pour from those, it's, they're too rigid. So I've just poured a little bit of each colour into one of my silicon cups. They're nice and squashy, so I, and I, they've got a little funnel, a little lip to it, so I can pour it much more easily and much more control. So, I'm, as I said, I'm going to start here. I'm just planning what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a line sweeping across that corner. And then a second line, if I start it here, um, in fact, I might just do it up. So it's actually going to end up 
maybe just over here, just off that corner. I've not done one that with that style before. Right, that was a bit straighter than I was planning, but doesn't matter. So let's go in with the, the salmony pink. So now I'm going to do my wiggly lines. Wow, those two are gorgeous together. And with this, I'm just going to bow the line round. I'm just very subtly trying to bring the colour round. Doesn't really matter because when I blow it out, it will change completely. Right, this is the pearl red, which just looks white. I say white, it actually looks off-white. It's a slightly creamy looking colour. Oh, do you know what? Just those three colours on their own would make a gorgeous painting. Oh, I'm going to have to try that. Right, here's the, the purple. Now this is a very pinky purple. When I think of purple, I think more of Cadbury's purple. This is, this is far from that. It's much pinker. Really pretty. Right, here goes the gold. Pebio Studio Acrylics do two golds, and this is the light one. I think this one is just called gold, and the other one is called precious gold. And this one is a lot lighter, it's not quite as warm. The other one is much richer and warmer, but less of a contrast, I think, to the red. Right, the red on top. Great, that's that part done. Got a couple of drips. If you get a drip, just pop your finger on it and then cl clean your finger and just keep, keep dabbing it and the colour will just disappear. Oh, I say that, it's not, is it? Okay, I've just added a little bit more white over the top <laughs> to make it disappear. I'm going to blow over that anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Right, let's torch the air bubbles. So I'm going to use my hairdryer for this one. I'm going to start with this top line and I'm going to blow from the end. So I'm going to blow from this end and I'm going to fan it upwards. Just moving all my other paints because I, I'll end up knocking them over otherwise. Right, here goes. Look at these cells. Wow, the cells are popping up everywhere. Oh, it's so exciting. So as I said, this is my second ever time of using the proper, proper flower troll. And the reason I got bought it was because it's notorious for more cells. The last painting I did with the flower troll, it had lots of cells, but they were tiny. And then somebody um, left a comment on my last painting um, suggesting that the paints were maybe a bit thin. So actually these are slightly thicker and I've got bigger cells. So thank you to whoever mentioned the paint consistency in relation to cells and flower troll on my last painting. 
because that has done the trick. The gold is amazing. Right, so that's my basic shape, but I'm not happy with this at all at the moment. So um, I'm now going to spend time just blowing the edges. I want them to be a little bit softer, not too soft, not too wispy, but just a little bit softer than this. Right, I'm quite happy with this bit, bit now. Um, however, I'm wondering if there's too much negative space. I'm sure a lot of people love the negative space, would, would not touch this, but I'm just not sure. Oh, I've got something in my paint there. If you see any little lumps in your paint, get them out because, especially with Dutch pores, when it dries, that it will dry so flat and smooth, you will see the lumps. These cells are amazing. A 100% Floatrol is better than Oatrol for cells. I am absolutely amazed. I've got more cells in this than I think in any of my previous Dutch pores with Oatrol. Right, happy, but it's looking a bit sparse. So I'm gonna do a really subtle line here and maybe just a little bit here. I'm, it might be too much, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Right, that's my paint down. Incidentally, I should say, when I, I mentioned earlier that these paints were slightly thicker than the last Dutch, Dutch pour, all I meant was that they I had mixed them to the, exactly the ratio I said, but in the previous painting, I'd end up ended up watering some of them down to match the consistency of the thinnest pot, um, pot of paint. This time I didn't. I mixed them all exactly to the consistency, the ratio that I mentioned, and then kept them all the same except the dark blue because it was significantly thicker than the rest so i just added a splash more water in that right let's hope i haven't wrecked this by adding more let's let's uh, blow this out see what happens I'm sorry, I'm going to keep going on about these cells. Within literally a few seconds, the cells are amazing. Oh, so exciting. I'm adding a tiny, tiny bit more simply because I feel like I kind of want them to look like they're all coming from the same point. So I'm just going to bring the colour 
back down this way a little bit, but I'm, I'm using the stir stick to add the colour because otherwise I'll just put far too much on. So again, exactly the same colours in exactly the same order. Right, I'm now totally happy with this one, but I'm still not happy here. This bit I'm happy with, not this bit. So to me, that's too dark. The blue is, there's too much blue. So if you're not happy with something, do something about it. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to scrape it, get rid of that bit and re-pour it. It's such a shame to be happy with your painting, apart from one area. Obviously, there's a risk if you scrape it and you interfere that you make things worse or that you end up less happy. But I just think, how can you leave it if you're not happy? Otherwise, I'll be forever looking at that bit, thinking, oh, I wish I did something extra. Once it's dry, I wish I did this, I wish I did that. So at least... I know that I've tried my best with it. I'm just deciding whether to use hair dryer or mouth. I'm going to use hair dryer very gently. Problem is, if I just use my mouth, the bits that you blow with your mouth look different from the rest from the hair dryer bits, so I think it would stand out. Um. Still not happy. Too much paint. I need to do it again, exactly the same again, but with less paint. I'm going to take that off as well. Tell you what, let's take it all off. It's much easier when you, I think when you do the whole line again, rather than um, just trying to do little bits of it and trying to get it to blend in. Also make sure you scrape the edges because you want all the edges to match. I decided to put it back in the paint back into these little silicon cups because then I'm actually putting the paint on in identical ways to the rest of it. So I think it would just that will help it look and feel the same as the rest and not like a little add on bit. Right, fingers crossed, I don't want to do this again. Third time has to be it. Right, much happier, much, much happier. It's much simpler, like the rest of it. Right, one thing I've noticed is that this white channel through here seems to be closing up and I don't want it to. I don't really want those to touch. What I could do is to try and push them apart, not blow on it, but just try and add a little bit more white paint just through there. And by adding more volume of paint, that should just... Oh, let's not do that. That should just push the colours back apart. Yeah, it is doing. 
Obviously, I've got a, a dollop, which I didn't mean to do. I'll sort that out in a second. But And then, if you, I want to, which I'm going to a little bit, I can now blow there. If I blew on it before, I would have just caught both edges. Because there's more paint now, I can, I've got more to play with. Right, if it stays like that, I'll be happy. Oh, I'm so happy. Wow. So, I would normally torch to get cells. I don't need cells because I've got loads, but I'm just, just wondering whether I should torch or not. There's a couple of little areas where there's less cells. So, for example, here and here. So, the bits that I've added on, actually. So I think I am just going to torch those. Um, and I'm just wondering about blowing this bit over the edge here. I think I might. Yeah, that's just, there was a big section of gold there. And what that's done is just sort of split that up a little bit. Wow, what a cool painting. So um, I did one like this before and I called it curly kelp because it looked like sea kelp. And this is just the same. It's definitely another curly kelp painting. Right, let me get you in for a close up. So here it is, but the it's obviously now the other way up. This is the way I've been looking at it. So what I'm really happy with is how all the colours started down from this corner and then work their way up. Um, let me take you in for a close-up. Um, I just, oh, so excited to show you all of these cells and this is without torching. So this comes purely from the flower troll. I'm absolutely over the moon with this. This this is a game changer for me today, this painting. Sometimes um, I discover something and I think, right, that's how I'm doing it from now on. This is a total game changer. So the Flower Troll, I think, is just, it's amazing. It is so much better than the Oa Troll. Oa Troll's fine, but I've never, ever achieved these wonderful cells in quite this, in quite this number. I definitely think there's a difference and having the paint slightly thicker today has made the made, made the cells a little bit larger. I mean just look. You've just got all the colors showing through there. Let's show you over here. Really love this color combination. There's a beautiful little section of cells there. And there as well absolutely gorgeous i am over the moon you can probably tell um i also feel it's a slightly patriotic uh painting this because it's definitely red white and blue um with a few other hints but yeah so so happy right i will be back when it's dry i am so so excited about this painting I, I'm, I'm just so happy with it the colors are lovely i'm so happy considering i don't ever use red I love it. The crimson and the blue and the gold, just amazing. Um, the cells, this this has to be one of my favourite ever Dutch pours, purely just because of the cells, the reactions that have happened between the different paint colours are just absolutely gorgeous. Um, and just to think I got the cells without torching, they just appeared as if from nowhere, um, which doesn't normally happen with my Dutch pours. Um, I love the dark, dark colours against the really white background. Um, and what I love with Dutch Paws is this really a lovely irregular edge. I like it to be a real um, bold contrast between the side, between the base colour. But I just love the fact that it's really irregular um, and floaty. And it uh, somehow just makes it feel quite natural um, like that. Uh, and that's that bottom one. That, that's probably my favourite little section there stripy cells just so so happy with it 
So Fluoratrol, Flood Fluoratrol, American Flood Fluoratrol gets a massive thumbs up from me. Really, really pleased with that. I just can't wait to do more, to do more experiments, more practicing, more, more, more touch balls. Um, great. Please drop me a comment if you want to. Let me know what you think of this. Any comments about Fluoratrol, um, I'd love to hear them. Um, and thank you so, so much for watching. Great. Enjoy your day, everybody. Bye.